Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. Before I start, first kill graphic novel, link is in the description. I've been having a lot less problems with coughing since I started uh, cooking for myself, basically every meal. For years I would just order Grubhub or delivery, whatever. But um, uh, the, 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 the frying chicken, the, the grease, the oil afterwards, I can't take it. The whole kitchen, it's like permeated into every surface. What do y'all do with the oil? And please don't say reuse it, but like, how do you handle this aspect? If I can't find a solution, I'm just going to start air frying everything because I, I, I hate this so much. But anyway, um, so uh, yesterday I saw this, not a tweet, a whatever you call a tweet on Blue Sky. By the way, um, so... Uh, <laughs> SJW cancel pigs, they're idiots. Um, you have to be invited to Blue Sky, I believe, to get a membership. Um, and people only have so many that they can share with friends. But I think in their head, they don't know that you don't need an account to see their account. So they will talk about shit that I don't think they realize... <laughs> Everyone can just read it if you just go to their uh, page. Um, so I saw this yesterday and I was angry. And I was like, oh, I just did a video, but I'm about to do another video right now when I'm angry. And then I had a second thought. And I said, okay, I'm angry right now. But if I wait until tomorrow, I will be mean. And that makes a much better video. <laughs> um so this is Heidi McDonald, uh, corrupt journalist, the corrupt journalist, the most corrupt journalist in comics. Even among mainstream journalists, she would be considered excessively uh, corrupt. So uh, <coughs> yesterday she, I'm just going to say tweeted, um, I sit here all day answering emails, DMing with people about what's really happening recommending people for jobs and planting seeds of new projects and wondering when I will be able to get to my real job, writing, and then realize my real job is all that networking and listening. So channel's been going for almost seven years. There's a lot of lore. Uh, I did a video <coughs> a day or two, and I guess I didn't really explain things well enough because people who had started listening recently they couldn't understand at all but Heidi has been in the industry forever I was in high school and I am 50 and she was writing the uh, a column in Amazing Heroes which was a, a zine uh, kind of like wizard but before wizard I loved Amazing Heroes it was it was the best um, that and uh, comics interview but anyway um so she's been in the comic industry a while, but I think it's better to say that she's been near it. So actually in the industry, working as an editor, I don't think that phase of her comics career even lasted for uh, a decade. She's on some books at DC, a couple other companies, and then for the last 20 years, she's been a journalist. But not really. <laughs> it's basically been some sort of club or, as uh, they like to say, found family. So what she does is just, um, I'm actually kind of in shock. Because my assumption was her, she's always begging for money to pay for like hosting fees for her uh, website, which is a couple hundred dollars a month. So it's like, oh shit, she must be fucking broke if she can't cover that. And the advertising can't cover that. She's talked about being stiffed by comic book companies that she gives advertising to. My assumption was that she had a normie job. But it doesn't look like it. It looks like she just spends almost the entire day. This is how I interpret this tweet. Um... She's saying, I spend so much time doing whisper network bullshit 
that I barely have any time to be a corrupt journalist. So much so that she is asking people to uh, work for her essentially for free. It's 2024 and at comicsbeat.bsky.social. <laughs> Aren't you glad that you scared yourselves away from Twitter? So now you have to use Blue Sky, which has like 10 times wonkier of a freaking. <laughs> so Heidi is looking for writers, editors, uh, entertainment editor, contacts and experience required reporter who can write a news story and do research if necessary reporters at uh emerald city comic-con c2e2 and more send clips resume must love comics and then <laughs> there is some pay i'm sorry there is some pay pay please look at the <laughs> please look at the screen <laughs> There is some pay pay for editors. Oh, God, fuck. At first, I thought that was a typo. Oh, Jesus. I think it's this 60 year old woman trying to be like hip. Oh, the, the kids, they say pay pay. I heard, the, I heard that on the subway. They say pay pay. I'm going to say pay pay. Oh, Jesus. It never gets better. <laughs> Okay, <sighs> there is some pay pay for editors and reporters, but not a lot because this is comics journalism. So I went to Barnes & Noble last week. Uh, I haven't been to a Barnes & Noble in a year. I did a uh, one of those. I think it was one of those ones where they have the cat at the end, the Nestle's Crunch one, where in a different city, I went down one whole row at Barnes & Noble and then the other side of the row, and it was all manga except for two, the two bookshelves at the far end. And essentially one was for more Marvel and one was for DC. And it was shocking. And then since I was going to another store near the Barnes & Noble here, I, uh, I was like, okay, I'll go in. I'll see what's happening with the graphic novels. And I went in and... If you've been to Barnes & Noble, most of them have almost the exact same layout. So I went looking for the graphic novel section where it usually is near the sci-fi and it wasn't there. And then I went all the way to the back and they had taken the area that used to be for the DVDs and the CDs and it was almost entirely manga. It was, I mean, there was two full rows both sides and then along the wall as well and then at the most remote part of this section which was a literal dedicated manga section um and i should have i don't know i almost need like a like a drone it wasn't just more aisles it's like a kind of like an alcove or something like that so it's very, it's, it's almost like a stage. It's, it's, it's prestigious. Um, almost the entire thing is manga. And then two sad bookshelves. Now you might say, oh, they're not losing space because they had two bookshelves a, a year ago and they had two now. No, they had two bookshelves um, when there were two rows of manga. There's now essentially five rows of manga. And the two shelves that a year ago were full were sparse. I mean, there was maybe 60% of the space used. It was pathetic. Um, I actually got pretty emotional and I went looking for someone to blame. And the first two names that popped into my head were Rich Johnston and Heidi McDonald. Uh, Heidi has been super corrupt for about the last six or seven years. Um, Rich is, to me, he's not even a journalist. He's kind of like the Joker in The Dark Knight. He's, he just wants to watch the world burn. So I don't even call him a corrupt journalist because I don't consider him to be a journalist. He's a, he's a spoiler. Um, they have 
for 20 years, but really for the last 10, created this false narrative that there was a massive audience for far left activist gay comics. Not all of those at once, but there's a huge audience for far left. There's a huge audience for activists. There's a huge audience for female. There's all these massive audiences and you are a bigot of every category if you disagree. And all we've seen is the footprint, the area held by American comics shrink. Two bookshelves, two bookshelves, except for there are now three times as many manga, which means the percentage is down, not even getting into the sparse uh, filling of books on the shelves. And I had such incredible anger and I was actually getting really emotional because I remember when I first got into collecting comics on a weekly basis in the late 1980s, I would go to Little Professor Bookstore in uh, Ralston or La Vista. I think it was La Vista, Nebraska, in the, the mall with the Richmond Gordman. Richmond, was it Richmond Gordman? Okay, that doesn't sound right. But that was like a department store. And the graphic novel section was not a section. It was in the sci-fi section, there would be one shelf, not one bookshelf with a bunch of shelves, one shelf. And it wouldn't even be the entire shelf. There would be other sci-fi stuff, maybe Dungeons and Dragons modules. And then they would have just one copy, mind you, of the following books. Dark Knight Returns, Watchmen, Camelot 3000, which completely got memory hold by everyone, but it was huge back then. Saga of the Swamp Thing. Uh, maybe some weird, like, compendium about, like, Dick Tracy or Shmoo or some weird, <laughs> some weird oldie Olsen shit like that. That was it. And I'm telling you, it's almost back to that. Um, the thing is that those books were proven sellers. Uh, Camelot 3000 sold quite well in the direct market. It was only available in the direct comic book market. The other ones had newsstand editions, some of them. Uh, but, um, actually, no, that's, that's wrong. Dark Knight Returns didn't have a newsstand, newsstand edition. And I don't think Watchmen did. Okay, so I misspoke on that part. Um, but anyway, they were popular, they got good reviews, and they sold well at the time. Uh, I have watched, this is another weird kind of sad thing about getting older. I remember when Bruce Willis first blew up and uh, he was on like a wine cooler commercial <laughs> and moonlighting and uh, that weird cowboy movie that nobody liked and then Die Hard. Like I was there for everything. I remember it all. And now he's got, uh, what is it called? Aphasia. He can't talk. I saw the entire trajectory of basically his life um, from 30 to 60. And now he's, what's a nice way to say a vegetable? He's not a vegetable, but it's, it's really sad. And I feel like I've seen the entire trajectory of the direct market. Um, and it didn't happen because of genetics. Like with Bruce Willis, it was destroyed. And the three people that come to mind that hurt it the most, Rich Johnston, Heidi McDonald, and Brian Hibbs. Brian Hibbs is that guy. He looks like comic book guy from Simpsons. Uh, by far the most selfish person in, if, if Heidi McDonald is the most corrupt, he is the most selfish. The reason digital comics cost the same as physical comics is because of Brian Hibb. He wouldn't fucking shut up about it for years. He's the guy that he wanted to be a COVID ninny and he lived in San Francisco and they were staying on lockdown forever. He was shaming stores in like Missouri for opening up again. He was shaming, uh, uh, what was it? Lunar UCS 
for not being loyal to Diamond because he gets a special deal with them. Like, he literally wanted the entire industry to be shut down as long as he did. And he wanted, uh, uh, he hates the distributors because one's a competitor to him, even though he's so fucking lazy that he shut down Nerd Roddick's store that he took over because the two employees quit and he didn't want to interview for new ones. Meanwhile, saying everything is great. Rich Johnson saying everything is great. Heidi McDonald is saying everything's great. Meanwhile, Jeremy Whitley, who's worked at every company, is like, my teeth literally fall out of my fucking mouth. And he's not the only one. This other indie uh, pro was talking about the same thing. These people are homeless. These people are pre-homeless. These people have $9 in the bank. No savings. No credit cards. Begging constant begging and finally got so bad that they could no longer spread this propaganda so apparently and this is what makes me so fucking angry they're making up new propaganda so this is there this is full of orwellian doublespeak because heidi mcdonald is a piece of shit she is going around to conventions and going up to people, going up to people and say, I heard you're CG. And they'll be like, what the fuck? People are saying you're CG. They're like, what the hell? What? No, I'm not. Well, people are saying it. Heidi is people. Heidi is 60 fucking years old, waddling around conventions, which are work events. Meanwhile, she's putting the work in Whisper Network. She's wandering around work events intimidating and harassing people with the rumors that she herself is spreading. So when she says, I sit here all day answering emails, that means she's sending out, ooh, so-and-so is CG, oh, so-and-so is this, I heard this, I heard this, they're not hiring enough, oh, have you heard about Ghost Machine? They only have one. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, bitch. You have fucking helped to destroy an entire American industry. And you're probably living in some rent-controlled fucking apartment that costs the same that it cost when you moved in in fucking 1986. You're two years away from collecting Social Security, so you don't give a fuck. But we do. We have watched this industry be fucking destroyed. And name three books that Heidi McDonald has edited, co-written, been involved with. Name three Alex DeCampi books off the top of your head. Not describe them. Not say be something. What's the title? This is a really easy question for any professional. You got all these people who don't contribute anything but problems. And eventually they contributed so many fucking problems that it was more than the industry could survive. You can't just constantly fucking whittle away at something like Gail Simone. We're going to whittle away at the tent poles. Bitch, do you know what tent poles do? They keep the tent up. Fucking hell. And like I said, it's not just these people. It's weak men like Scott Snyder who just sat around. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'll take the pledge. I'll take the job. I'll take anything. <sighs> So when she says, I sit here all day answering emails, DMing with people, what she's saying is, I spread rumors and gossip and I undermine the industry all fucking day long, even to the detriment of my own supposed business. But this is the one that made me DMing with people about what's really happening, because that's that's the thing they always used to say. And that's the thing they used to say to a bunch of YouTubers who are now successful publishers. It's like, well, you're not even in comics and you don't understand. Jamal Eigel used to love to say that. You don't understand the industry. Direct market is pretty fucking easy to understand. Companies produce books. They put them in a catalog. Stores order the books. Then it, the books are printed, sent to the distributor. Then they go to the store and then they are possibly sold to customers. 
There's nothing confusing about the direct market. It's very simple to understand. So that to me was always very suspicious that these Dunning-Kruger uh, Community College graduates were constantly telling people the same phrase over and over and over again. You don't understand. You don't have to be in the industry to understand it. It's a very understandable industry. That's what this downfall of the American comic book uh, spreadsheet, which is going to be an infographic or possibly two. This is about like when you do it in a timeline, it's shocking. First of all, your memory, my memory, probably everyone's memory is a little fuzzy. Like I remember things differently, but then when I go back to check the sources, it's like, oh, this happened actually before I started the channel. I completely forgot that like a bunch of things happened within like days of each other. And I mean, you had Howard Chaikin canceled mags with the baseball bat and the milkshake and they were all in the same fucking month like a lot of shit so there's kind of clusters of things but it's a very understandable industry and the downfall is understandable and it didn't just happen passive voice it wasn't a paper shortage it wasn't a lockdown it wasn't distributor wars it was a solid structure that was whittled away on a daily basis and you see the, the gusto that Heidi McDonald uses to keep control. Um, this is essentially just a click for her. It's a found family. She doesn't care if it, the entire industry is destroyed. She doesn't care if Jeremy Whitley's teeth are literally falling out of his fucking jaw. She doesn't care if Tess Fowler is homeless. She cares about a small click of her friends in the New York City area. That's it. And... Everybody, an American industry that she didn't create has to pay. And it's her, and it's Rich Johnson, and it's Brian Hibbs, and it's all these weak, weak men like Scott Snyder who just watched it all happen. Um, but when she says DMing with people about what's really happening, that's a code for we are trying to figure out the next propaganda, the next style of gaslighting. Because that thing where we added in crowdfunding, manga, YA, that worked for a few years. But now people are wise. So let's, uh, hey, Dr. Seuss books, they have words and pictures. So they're graphic novels. Let's add all of the sales to them. And then we can say that Sales doubled in 2024 because we added a new category to uh, graphic novels. This is this is double speak, DMing with people about what's really happening. Just as when she goes to conventions and goes up to booth, harassing people at a work event and says, "People are saying you're CG. You're not CG, are you? You're CG. I don't think you are, but people are saying that, bitch. You are quote people unquote." 60 years old and acting like you are in middle school helping to destroy an American industry. Recommending people for jobs and planting seeds of new... Pro what the fuck does that have to do with journalism? Planting seeds of new projects? That just means, oh, who are you working with on that... Oh, them? Mm, I don't know. Oh, I think they're CG adjacent. What about this 500-pound black lesbian who can't read? I heard everyone who doesn't hire her is in the KKK. That's what people are telling me. Wondering when I will be able to get to my real job. Well, I mean, technically, you don't have a job. You have to beg for people to pay your hosting fees. I'm guessing, I don't know. You had a slip and fall in a store in 1990 and you get a small stipend. You're on the dole. I mean, there's this whole, uh, I'm just going to call them a class <laughs> of people in New York City. Every single brownstone has them. There are these kind of like weird Kramer types. They got a rent controlled unit in 1979. They're paying freaking $120. And you know what? They have the most complaints of everyone. Everything has to revolve around them. And, uh, hmm, editor-in-chief of Comics Beat 
yet you are recommending people for jobs and planting seeds of new projects doesn't seem to be anything to do with what an editor-in-chief of a news organization that sounds like an activist or, as I would say, a saboteur. Um, this is something awful that happened, discussed in uh, open comms, as they say, on there on Blue Sky. But, I mean, it's all been there from the beginning. One of the things I always say is, they say, oh, the sales, they're hidden. You make three calls, Heidi, you can get the numbers. You can hide sales, but you can't hide like conversations. If all of these lesbian characters and trans writers were super popular, people would always be talking about them on Twitter, on Facebook, on Discord. They're not talking about them. Not at all. It was always fucking fake. You had 10 years of SJW comics and no classics. You don't have even like, hey, remember that classic SJW story? No, no, there's no classic. One shots, fill ins, series, mini series, OGNs, trade paperbacks. And eh, maybe like the first Ms. Marvel uh, trade paperback, like the first, first one. Uh, good art, fun story. I wouldn't call it a classic. It was good. Um, there's no mystery. There's no, uh, what was that, clue? Colonel Mustard in the drawing room with the candlestick. No, there's no fucking mystery about who did this. It was Heidi McDonald. It was Brian Hibbs. It was Rich Johnston. It was David Gabrielle. It was Alex DeCampi. It was Tess Fowler. It all happened. There's no mystery. There's only just a little bit of fairly easy work of just spending some time assembling this uh, spreadsheet, using it to create an infographic, and it's going to be very easy to see. There's no, there's no mystery. There's no twist. There's like, oh my gosh, can you believe that when a group of people spent 10 to 20 years trying to undermine and whittle away at the support structures of a stable industry that it collapsed can you believe that i can believe that there's a funny thing in um uh in uh san francisco where they didn't want to admit that they had a homeless problem forever but they just blamed a whole bunch of things on dogs it's like because they literally had like uh not telephone poles but like the light poles were falling over because there was so much uh freaking uh corrosion from the salt and uh other chemicals in urine and they would say oh uh curb your dogs because they're falling down and then you go and and the stains are three feet high <laughs> like it's not dogs it's people um and uh like there's never been a mystery i think a lot of people were just trying to get through their day their week their month their year and say not my circus, not my monkeys, but it was your tent. It was the huge tent that the industry threw on a pretty damn good show for almost a century. And now it is collapsing around you. And the people who literally said, let's whittle away at the tent poles are like, what happened? I heard there's a staple shortage. Yeah, there's, we can't. We used to have more staples. Yeah, and then tr shut the fuck up. A bunch of assholes. Huh. Anyway. First kill. Okay, let me. I feel like I had some sort of thesis besides just saying these people are assholes. Yeah, what I'm trying to say is it's very understandable. There was no mystery. Um, in fact, there was more. Uh, it was kind of funny. I had my physical and for the first time ever, probably because I'm mostly cooking for myself, I didn't have like really bad cholesterol, uh, blood sugar. Everything was fine. Like the first time ever, like they said, 
you can eat the same stuff, just eat a little bit less of it because you're a couple pounds overweight. These people, all the things we knew they were doing, it's kind of the opposite. They were doing it more than we realized. Like, I didn't realize, and Heidi McDonald is basically admitting to it right here. She spends all fucking day in Whisper Network. So much so that she doesn't have time to write for her own website and has to cajole people to do it for freezies. So when this collapses, I think the main... By the way, Heidi, could you find a lower resolution screenshot from Wii 3? Like, fucking hell. Ugh. I think the ultimate value of this channel and other sim <laughs> similar channels is uh, just documenting. We tried. We tried. I, I thought... When I started, I thought some caustic criticism would get their attention, would rile them up, and they would course correct. But one of the things I notice when I create this is that the course was set quite proudly years before I started a channel. I mean, from Dan Slott telling a fan to go fuck yourself for a very bland comment and being rewarded for that, encouraged by the press, from Gail Simone weaponizing her cat lady army to get rehired after being fired for cause, to hiring some airhead bimbo because some schlubby hipster wants a work wife, to uh, deciding that... You can have infinity minus one male characters be killed as plot points, but you can't have a female character be scared on a cover. Got to get rid of that. Oh, by the way, the straight character for 40 years, he's bisexual, which means he's gay. Hey, let's hire a learning disabled person because they check enough diversity boxes. Hey, you know that guy who's really great at drawing beautiful women? People love that. Men love it. Women love it. Yeah, we've got to stop that. And we've got to start using approved body type. Oh, and also, the heroes are villains. Miss Marvel puts her peers, high school students, in illegal secret prisons on... <laughs> All of this happened. Ask me about my feminist agenda. It all happened before... My channel started. And then they just continued for years and years and years. And now they're like, oh gosh, things are kind of bad. Well, they're not kind of bad. They're very bad. And that's because you made them very bad. You've been doing this for 14 fucking years. I've had people suggest things like one more day. I don't consider that something that would be uh, a controversial storyline. I mean, Dark Phoenix Saga was controversial as well. That's not something that leads to the downfall of the industry. Um, things like this do. So, uh, weirdly enough, I thought this would just be a side project to noodle on in my spare time. And I think ultimately it will be my life's work. Uh, so, before I go, first kill graphic novel link is in the description. Thanks for watching. Bye.